Hey, this is Mike in the Film Lab on the Substream.com and elsewhere. And today I'd like to talk, I'd like to introduce just like this most radical concept that's important that you put in your brain in the beginning stages of becoming a really good, spectacularly talented filmmaker, which I know you're going to be. And that's the importance of choosing the right tools to make the movie that you want to make. Now, when you first start making movies, when you first end up with a camera in your hands and an idea in that little coconut on top of that neck of yours, if you're anything like anybody else, you shoot with any light you can get your hands on, like the sun, for example. And I'd like to thank myself in the past for writing dialogue that implies that you can get your hands on the sun. But what if you want to make movies about people that live inside or do things at night? Then you start shooting scenes that are full of lamps, all the lamps you can find in your whole mom's house, all arranged around the character, lighting them beautifully. But what if you want to make a movie about a person that has no lamps? That's when you have to start using filmmaking equipment the real stuff from production houses, and then it gets complicated. The cheapest, most common filmmaking lights are tungsten lights. It's technology that's been around for, well, like 700 years. When did they invent tungsten? 700 years? 800 years? I think dinosaurs invented them, actually. They use a whole crap load of electricity, a lot of electricity, to get this little chunk of tungsten, which is an element, really hot. It then emits a bunch of light, which comes out about 3200 degrees Kelvin. Does that look like a tungsten bulb? They're really good for when you're shooting inside or at night, or when you want to make a movie about somebody that doesn't own any lamps. But what if you want to shoot something more complicated? What if you want to shoot inside a saloon during the day, like they do in Cowboys and Aliens? You got the sun outside your saloon, and it's streaming in through the windows, right? Okay, the sun is really convenient. It's just up there. You don't have to pay any grips to set it up. It's right there, and it shoots out this really bright light that's about 5,600 degrees Kelvin, which is... Weirdly enough, kind of bluish. So you tell your camera that you're shooting daylight. Light comes over here and hits the camera box, which is over here, and it turns white all of a sudden, and everything is great. But what if you want to stick lights in your saloon? What if you need to get some light on some characters' faces that are sitting with their backs to the window? Well, you get your tungsten lights, and you hoist them up in there, and you shine them on everybody, and they shoot their orange photons straight at your camera. But your camera is set to perceive that sunlight is white, and you end up with a huge, horrible mess of mixed sources. You have neutral-looking sunlight with weird, orangish-looking tungsten light everywhere else. So maybe you tell the camera that you're shooting tungsten light instead. So then you end up with neutral-looking tungsten light, but then horrible, crazy, weird, blue light coming in through the windows. This is a bad situation. Mixed sources suck. They're the worst. So what do you do? You correct one of your sources with gels, this stuff called CTB. It's on that lamp over there that we're using because we have a big skylight that's sending a bunch of blue sunlight in. It's this blue gel type stuff that transforms magically the orange light into blue light, meaning everything ends up being white again. That being said, it's terrible to work with, it's inconvenient, it's never around when you need it, and most importantly, it sucks two whole stops out of the power output of your light, making already inefficient tungsten lights even more inefficient, and defeating the purpose of setting up lights in the first place, which means when you correct tungsten lights, you need more tungsten lights, which means you need to spend more money and use more electricity and have more people on set. It's terrible. So what do you do? You think about what you need to shoot. You think, I know I'm going to be shooting sunlight coming in through the window of the saloon, and I know I don't want to have a bunch of inefficient tungsten lights that I'm going to have to correct with gels on the inside. You think, hey, wait, didn't Mike on the substream tell me that Kinos, for example, can come with daylight bulbs? They can. Or, even cooler than that, lamps called HMIs, which are just about the coolest lamps you can ever use. We're going to be looking at those next week in the gear guide, so check back then.